Okay, so the, the question was, what is the purpose of the venomous spurs on the backs? The, yeah, they're called venomous spurs. I didn't actually talk about that, but I can, I can tell you've read things. Um, <laughs> so so that's, that's kind of sort of unknown, actually. Um, so it, it, it may have something to do with protecting them from predators, but they don't have a huge number of predators just on the basis of the fact that they're mostly nocturnal and they live in burrows. Um, it probably has something, it's only in males, so it probably has to do with territory defense and breeding rights. Yes? Okay, yes. So um, so all monotremes have electroreception. What? Oh, I'm sorry. The, the question was, does the echidna also have electroreceptive abilities? And that's, that's a complicated question. So all monotremes have electroreceptors. Um, the platypus has about 40,000 in its bill, but the echidna only has about 400. So... What this kind of demonstrates is that the, the, the presence of electroreceptors is an ancestral state that's being lost in echidna. Because echidna is not aquatic. And you kind of need to be aquatic for electroreceptors to work because their electricity doesn't travel as well in air as it does in water. Um, so they can be trained to use them, but they don't seem to natively. Yes. Not at all. Um, it's, it's a smooth material. It's almost more like leather. It just coincidentally kind of looks the same. Oh, I'm sorry. The question to that was, uh, we call it a duck bill, but is it in any way related? And it is not. Yes? Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, that's true. That was my forked dongle joke that I didn't make because I was advised against it. <laughs> Hey, there are enough embarrassing photos of me on the internet. I don't need to add more. So anyway, <laughs> so tell me, yes, your question is? <laughs> seems good, seems good. <laughs> what is the evolutionary purpose of the forked penis of the platypus? Mmm. <laughs> You want to know some extra fun facts of that? So it's, it's, it's not only bifurcated, but it has four heads. And only two of them are used for ejaculation at any time. So, yeah, this is what everybody really wants to know. So, so it's, it's bifurcated, and at the end it looks like this. And, and during any single copulation event, one of them goes like this, and the other one works. And then the second time around they alternate, and the other one goes like this, and they do it again. So... So, and as for why, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> so, in, in the back there, in the black shirt. So the question was, because it uses electroreceptors, does that mean that it can't scavenge for already dead food? To, to be honest with you, I don't know how to answer that question. Um, I don't know that they do scavenge. If they do, I'm, I, I, I would guess that in that case, it's just kind of like they stumbled across it. Yes? So, so the question is, would I rather fight a hundred platypus-sized horses or one horse-sized platypus, male or female? <laughs> female. Female. Uh, you know, it, go on YouTube and look up platypus videos. These little guys are actually really, really friendly and very personable. They'll, like, bounce around. They'll crawl on you. Like, they're super adorable. So I will take the horse-sized female platypus. Yes. Have I ever handled a platypus? And no, and what I wouldn't give. Um, so, so the secret truth to all of this is I spent my entire academic career studying the platypus because I was, when I was 10 years old, we were in Australia for a long time, and I saw one in an aquarium. And I was like, oh my god, that thing is amazing. Um, but I have never touched one personally. Uh, I, I know, oh my god, I want it so bad. <laughs> so no. <laughs> any, any other platypus questions? One more, one more. I'm sorry, you're right in the light. I can't see you. Oh, okay. So how does a platypus identify whether what it's chasing is a prey or a predator? So I didn't go into it in this talk, but but there's actually um, there's a range of receptive... like. Uh, sorry, let me phrase that better. Um, 
put my thoughts in order. Uh, th- there's a threshold that they'll respond to. There's a minimum threshold and a maximum threshold. Um, and don't forget that they're also incorporating uh, mechanical activity. So if it's a massive thing, it's going to be disturbing this huge amount of water. If it's a little tiny shrimp, they're just going to be getting these very small things. So like if these guys are swimming around and they're swimming up to, I don't think they have crocodiles in Australia, but let's say somebody drops a crocodile in the river and they're swimming toward, like this thing's going to be displacing this massive amount of water and they can sense that so that did that answer your question at all i could talk about uh about thresholds but that'll take forever so you can ask me later <laughs> what fresh water okay last one over there what are the natural predators of platypus you know okay so they i think they're pretty minimal um these guys a live in water and b are nocturnal and c live in burrows so uh I don't know, your, your occasional carnivore in Australia. It's not very well discussed in literature. How about snakes? <laughs> sure, everything in Australia will kill you, including the platypus. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, but they, they do live in burrows, and there are a lot of water snakes, so I could totally see that being a problem. I haven't read a lot on what predators there are for platypus, I'm not going to lie. So I'm guessing, I'm speculating. All right. Thanks very much.